Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the balance sheet or sometimes known as the statement of financial position. This topic is covered on the CPA exam, which is this is why I have it as CPA exam bootcamp part one of three, because you need to understand the overall picture of a balance sheet and is also covered in intermediate accounting, usually chapter three or chapter four in your textbook. We'll talk about the financial statements. Now, in this session, we'll give you an overview about the balance sheet. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take each section and dive deep, a little bit deep into it. For example, we'll take the assets, break them into current and non-current. We'll do the same thing for liabilities and equities. But this is an overall picture about the three sections of the balance sheets, which are assets one, liabilities, and stockholders equity. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So what does the balance sheet tells us? Well, it reports our assets, which are our resources, cash, investments, receivable, inventory, so on and so forth, building, land. It shows us our liabilities, which is our obligation. How much money do we owe to other people in terms of borrowing, in terms of accounts payable, in terms of accrued liabilities, we have all the payables here. And the difference between those is called net assets. Min asset minus liabilities equal equity, which is the same thing as net asset. Net asset mainly shows us two things. Well, the difference between asset and liabilities indeed, but that's represented by how much the investor invested in the company, which is common stock and paid in capital, common stock and paid in capital or common stock or capital stock and retained earning, which is how much the company made and earned over the years. So this is an overall picture of the three sections. What are the usefulness of the balance sheet? So as a balance sheet, how good is it for us as investors, as creditors, as business analysts? Well, the first thing is it shows us the capital structure of the company. What is the capital structure? The capital structure shows us how much of our assets is financed by debt? How much of our assets is financed by equity? So notice we have almost 5 million in asset, 4.997. Notice, now we need to know how much of that is financed through debt. Well, of the five, we have 2.968 million of liabilities and the remaining 2 million in debt. So notice here in this company, the capital structure, if you really wanna have a rough estimate, if we take 2.9 divided by 4.9, approximately approximately 59% of our asset is financed through equity. So from, from the balance sheet, you could immediately see that this company relies more on that. That's their capital structure. And because of that, it's gonna help us assess the risk of the company and it's a future cash flow. Generally speaking, the more debt you have, if you rely more and on debt, you are a riskier company. And because you're a risky company, why are you a risky company? Let's let's talk about why debt is risky. Debt is risky because when you have debt, you have to pay your interest. You have no option. So you have what's called the pressure on your cash flow. Therefore, you become riskier if you have debt. That's why more debt means more risk. On the other hand, if you have if you are relying more on equity, you don't have to pay, you don't have to pay your stockholders dividend if you don't make a profit. But for that, you have to pay that interest, whether you have a good time or a bad time. Now, bear in mind, the balance sheet is as a specific date. Notice here, December 31st, 20X5. What else can the balance sheet show us more specifically? It can anal it help us analyze what we call the company's liquidity. And what is liquidity? Liquidity, how quickly assets can be converted into cash. When we talk liquidity, we'll, we're talking about can the company survive in the short term? Liquidity means in the short term. How quickly can you convert your asset into cash in order to pay your current liabilities? Because that's the immediate pressure. Why is that important? Well, if you're a creditor, you want to know if you're going to lend this company, if you're going to sell them on account, if you're one of their suppliers, how willing are you to do so? 
Well, the balance sheet will tell you. You would run some, you would run some ratios and kind of assess their liquidity. Also, as an investor, you're interested in cash. Well, you analyze the company from a liquidity perspective, which is we have more lessons about how to do so through ratios, and you will assess whether it's a good investment or not if you want to rely on dividend. So that's another feature that the balance sheet could tell us is the liquidity. Also, it can tell us about the solvency. What's the difference between solvency and liquidity? Solvency is looking in the long term. Can we survive in the long term? Do we have the ability to pay our long term debt as they become due? Because notice we have current liabilities and we have long term liabilities. The long term liabilities need to be paid. Well, we can run some ratios to figure out what is the company's solvency and the balance sheet would help us do so. Well, if we can't survive in the long term, we're not a viable company. We are a risky company. What else can the balance sheet tell us? It tells us about our financial flexibility. And what's financial flexibility? It's liquidity and solvency combined. Basically, you're looking at the overall picture. If a company is loaded with debt, it means it has less flexibility, whether that debt is short term or long term. Now, short term debt is riskier because you have to come up with the cash soon. Long term debt, you have a little bit more time. But nevertheless, they are both pressure. They're put pressure on your cash, on your cash flow. And companies, if they have a lot of debt and suddenly we have a financial crisis like COVID or like the financial crisis of 2007, 2008, they will not be able to survive. A case in point, a General Motor. General Motors did not survive the 2007-2008 financial crisis. Why? Because they had so much debt and they did not have enough cash on hand. So when their sales slowed down, they could not survive. Versus Ford, they, were little, they had a little bit more of a cushion and they were able to survive. So that's why debt is important because in that time, debt is risky, especially in, 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 uh, in slowdown. Higher flexibility means lower risk. When you have less debt, it means you have more options. You want flexibility. Why? Because when an opportunity comes, you have a good buy. You can buy another company. Well, if you don't have a lot of debt, you can borrow to buy this company. So you have higher flexibility, which is gives you lower risk because you have a cushion. You're flexible. You can survive if something happens. So this is all the good stuff about the balance sheet. Now, obviously, we're going to look at each account in the balance sheet and details uh, in various sections. Now, the balance sheet is great, but it has its own limitations. What are some of the limitations of the balance sheet? One, it uses historical cost. Now, not all accounts use historical cost, but many accounts on the balance sheet use historical cost, like land, building. When you buy them equipment, you record them at historical cost, and usually you keep them at historical cost. But the trend now is to stay away from historical cost. The trend is toward fair value. For example, your investment now are recorded at fair value. Your account receivable is recorded at net realizable value. It means how much can you get, how much can you receive from the account receivable. For example, your inventory is reported at your lower of, co of cost or market. So notice there is a trend of bringing more relevant valuation to the balance sheet. But, but most assets, not most, not all assets use historical cost, but still a large proportion use historical cost, which is meaningless for us. But as an investor's users, we can take the historical cost as a starting figure. Another limitation of the balance sheet, just like it's a limitation in accounting in general, is we use a lot of estimates and judgment. For example, account receivable, what we do is we estimate bad debt, which is from a balance sheet perspective, we estimate the allowance for doubtful account. That's an estimate figure. Warranty liabilities, if we have liabilities, we estimate the warranties. Same thing with accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is a form of estimate is a form of estimate because when you estimate the life of an asset, well, that's an estimate. Well, that estimate might be wrong, that estimate might be right, but nevertheless, it's an estimate, you're taking a risk. Also, the balance sheet don't capture certain value of the company. For example, if the company, they have a good management system, for example, excellent employees, that does not reflect on the balance sheet. If we take a company like Tesla, I would say their most important asset is Elon Musk. Well, if you look at their balance sheet, Elon Musk don't exist because the balance sheet don't capture the value of your employees. 
Also, the balance sheet don't capture the value of the company's reputation. Maybe your reputation is what really bring in you sales, not your actual asset. You look at the balance sheet, well, reputation is an asset, but it doesn't reflect on the balance sheet. So it's a soft asset. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to look at the various elements real quick from an overall perspective of the balance sheet. And the elements of the balance sheet are assets, which are the resources of the company, cash, inventory, receivable, prepaid, property, plant, and equipment, intangible. Those have economic value or future benefit. Okay, and assets will be broken down and we're going to look at various sections into a current section, long term investment section, property, plant and equipment, intangible and other assets. Most companies, they have four sections. Sometimes you have fifth section. If something doesn't fit in the four sections, you just have another section called other assets. That's fine. And we're going to look into each of these assets separately and in the next slide, breaking them down. The other section is liquidity, liquidity, no, sorry, not liquidity, liabilities, which will help with liquidities. A current obligation or, or a debt as a result of past transaction would which will require future sacrifice of asset, usually cash. Liability is usually broken down into two parts, current liabilities and long-term liabilities. Again, in the next section, we will cover current liabilities and long-term liabilities. And the third section is equity, which is, as we said, it's asset minus liabilities, which is the difference is equity. Now, under equity, usually the two main components of equity are common stock and when we say common stock include additional paid in capital which is what the investors paid into the company and another account called retained earnings and retained earnings is what the company earned and kept over the years those two are the main component of stockholders equity we have many many others we're going to have one whole chapter about equity that's not the point but i'm i'm giving you an idea about what's the main component of equity. So notice we have three sections as we started in the balance sheet. Assets, which is the first section. Liabilities is the second. And owner's equity is the third. Again, we're going to have, we're going to dive into each section. Then we're going to dive into each account in each of these section separately. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, lectures, multiple choice, exercises, true, false, and the notes to help you understand this concept better. Whether you are a CPA candidate, a financial accounting student, a CMA candidate. Understanding the balance sheet is critical for your success. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.